A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported what the chief priests and elders had told them. And when they heard it, they raised their voices to God with one accord and said, Sovereign Lord, maker of heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, you said by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of our father David, your servant, why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples entertain folly? The kings of the earth took their stand and the princes gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. Indeed, they gathered in this city against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, Herod and Pontius Pilate, together with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do what your hand and your will had long ago planned to take place. And now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness as you stretch forth your hand to heal and signs and wonders are done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. As they prayed, the place where they were gathered shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. Verbum Domini. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Why do the nations rage and the peoples utter folly? The kings of the earth rise up and the peoples conspire together against the Lord and his anointed. Let us break their fetters and cast their bonds from us. He who is throned in heaven laughs. The Lord derides them. Then in anger he speaks to them. He terrifies them in his wrath. I myself have set up my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for an inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall rule with an iron rod. You shall shatter them like an earthen dish. Blessed are all who take refuge in the Lord. Dominus Pobiscum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Johannem. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, 
We know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man, once grown old, be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I told you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Verbum Domini In our uh, first reading, uh, we heard this account of uh, Peter and John. They were being released after uh, having been questioned by the chief priests and elders. This is a continuation uh, from last week's account. Uh, what happened was that there was a crippled man whom Peter and John healed using uh, the powerful name of Jesus. And because of that good and merciful act on the part of the disciples, they were uh, taken in custody, they were kept overnight, and they were being questioned by these uh, chief priests and elders. Why they did what they did, and they were questioning by whose authority they did what they did, and so forth. And so today's account is what happened after that. Uh, they were released, and they went back uh, to their Christian community, and they reported what the chief priests and elders had told them. Now, the bulk of today's passage is actually a prayer, a lengthy prayer that they offered to God. And this is what I wanted to kind of focus on in this homily, uh, because from the content of their prayer, we can certainly learn to make their prayer our very own, because it would be very relevant uh, for you and me, uh, considering our context of today. Uh, again, Peter and John, they were questioned by the chief priests and elders, and, and in fact, they were threatened. They were threatened by them not to proclaim the name of Jesus anymore. Otherwise, they would be suffering as their consequence, and they may be put in prison for uh, a longer period of time instead of just uh, overnight. When one has been threatened by another, one would do either of two things. Uh, either one would abide by the threat and avoid at all costs from uh, experiencing the threat to become a reality, or one would do the opposite despite the threat. And so, what did Peter and John do? We could guess because of their boldness, because of the uh, time of, after Pentecost, uh, they weren't abiding by the threat in order to protect themselves. They were doing exactly the opposite despite the threat of suffering. But something to note is that they weren't uh, doing the opposite, not merely through their own human self-reliance. I think this is what we want to uh, keep our mind on considering our context of the day they weren't relying on their own uh, reliance they were relying on God and this is very evident in the long prayer uh, we heard uh, earlier uh, the prayer really has three major points and this is what I wanted to kind of go uh, through they began their prayer by acknowledging the Lord as the ruler of all so they began this 
wonderful acknowledgement. Sovereign Lord, maker of heaven and earth, maker of the sea and maker of all that is in them. In other words, they acknowledge and they profess that every rulers on this face of the earth, every kings, every leaders of the earth, every president, every governments, everyone on earth, whether believers or unbelievers, they're all subject under God. They're all subject under God. And then uh, the second point they proceeded in their prayers is that they reminded God how uh, persecution against God himself and against his anointed, against his servants, had been done many years ago in the past. So this was, they knew that this was not something new during their time, but it happened many times in the Old Testament period. And so they reminded God about that very fact. Uh, they reminded also of uh, what happened to Jesus, how he too was persecuted and he eventually was killed under Pontius Pilate and together with Herod, together with the Gentiles, together with even the peoples of Israel. And at the same time, the persecution that happened were actually part of the will of God. And this may be confusing at first. How could the evil of persecution be, be part of the will of God? It doesn't make sense. How could um, the innocent suffer? You know, how could evil be part of the will of God? Mother Angelica would make a distinction uh, about the will of God. Uh, she made two distinctions. Uh, persecution would not be part of God's ordaining will. Ordaining will meaning that God has planned this all along from the beginning of time. Before creation uh, was established, uh, God planned this. That's what ordaining will is referring to. She would say no. In persecution in any form against Christians particularly would not be God's ordaining will. Uh, it would not be something he had planned from the beginning. Uh, it's not God's ordaining will, but it's God's permissive will. That's how she make the distinction uh, in regards to the will of God. Ordaining will versus uh, uh, permissive will which means that God allows it to happen. God permits it to happen because of sins, because of uh, human free will choosing poorly for selfish reasons, because of ambitions, because of greed, because of lust for power, and so forth. The list goes on and on of the evil of human actions. Again, God allows and God permits all these to happen but he can bring good out of it. And this is what God is always good at. You know, always bringing good out of it. Always bringing good out of every single evil that happens uh, in the face of this earth. The supreme and perfect example would be the death of our Lord on the cross. You know, the perfectly innocent one put to death through evil men's actions. And that's a perfect Example, nothing can top that. Um, through the suffering and death of his begotten son, God shows his power by raising his son from the dead after three days, and from that, he brings good out of it. He brings about salvation for mankind. He brings about the plan of redemption for you and me and for all mankind. Again, God's permitting will uh, allow evil done against Jesus and he brought good out of it that you and me and all mankind have the means uh, to have our sins forgiven to have the means uh, to enter the promised land uh, of heaven as I mentioned earlier uh, when we consider our context today there's nothing new with our situation with the situation of the time of Peter and John we're in a similar situation, uh, the fact that persecution of Christians kept, kept on rising everywhere in the world. 
and including our very own nation here. Not by blood yet, perhaps, but nonetheless, persecution against us, against Christians, is already happening. And so again, this is a, a very relevant, their prayer is very relevant uh, for us to make it, you know, to be our own uh, prayer as well. And so I must point out the final part of their prayer, which is what you and I want to pray for. And this is, and that is having this desire, great desire, great zeal, great motivation, great drive, inner drive to accomplish what God wills from the beginning through us. That, God, that the gospel may be proclaimed to every corners of the earth through us, his instruments, through his servants, through his friends. I remember this story about, uh, about a little girl uh, who went to Mass with her dad on Sunday um, and his, her mom had to stay home because of uh, her illness. And so they both went to Mass and they came back from Mass and, um, and the mother was asking the daughter uh, about the homily. What did, what did Father talk about in the homily? And so the little girl was so excited because she paid attention to uh, the priest during homily. And so she blurted out, uh, out uh, immediately to the mother, yes, Father uh, told us to proclaim the gossip to every corners of the earth. So she got the words just a little bit mixed up with the gospel and gossip. We're not supposed to spread gossip throughout the world, but we're supposed to proclaim the gospel to every corners of the earth. That's God's plan for you and me. Um, from the beginning, he wants us to be his proclaimers, uh, you know, to every corners of the earth. And we can make the last line of their prayer to be our own regular prayer, constant prayer, repeated prayer for ourselves. And this is what they pray. Now, Lord, take note of their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness. That's what they were asking. Enable your servants to speak your word with all boldness. Notice that they weren't asking the Lord to keep them safe. They weren't asking the Lord to protect them. They weren't asking the Lord to stop persecution from continuing on. But they were asking the Lord to speak, to enable them so that they can speak uh, uh, His word with all boldness, be courageous, um, to proclaim the gospel with boldness, without fear, but with great confidence. Again, not relying on their own uh, willpower, but relying on the power of God, relying on the Spirit of God. So again, their prayer contained these uh, three main points. Uh, one is their acknowledgement of God as ruler of all, including ruler over all presidents, over all leaders, over all kings, over all governments, all earthly authorities. God is over all that. And then two, their reminder to God of past persecutions against his people and how in the end, God would always bring them to victorious over their enemies, even if it meant through death first, like our Lord, and then to the victorious resurrection of our Lord. And then finally, and something for us to especially note of, is this third point, uh, this request uh, from God to enable them to speak His word with all boldness while being persecuted. That's what you and I want to ask. The Holy Spirit wants us to ask this uh, for ourselves. God wants to give this to us, provided that we ask for it. You know, yesterday we celebrated the Divine Mercy Sunday. You know, God longs 
to grant his mercy upon us sinners, especially the greatest sinners in the world. God wants to pour out his love and mercy upon us all. And if he wants that, how much more God wants to give us so that his will and his plan be accomplished. That means we would be his uh, true instruments in proclaiming uh, the gospel. And so I conclude with a prayer uh, for all of us here and for all those listening and for all those uh, watching through this uh, network. Lord, grant to us your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.